News of a star exploding in the night sky. A star called T, capital letter T, Corona Borealis. So this is a star in the constellation Corona Borealis. Corona Borealis from the Latin simply translates to Northern Crown. The system is about 2,600 light years away. So of course, anything we observe today already happened 2,600 years ago. In the Northern Hemisphere, we have Corona Borealis, and one of the stars in that constellation varies in brightness significantly, explosively. And so the way we identify variable stars in a constellation is we start lettering them from R. So this is T Corona Borealis, RST. It's the third discovered variable star in the constellation Corona Borealis. Okay. It's been known for quite some time that this thing, the, the, the luminosity varies, and then one day it explosively varies. On a level where if you didn't know it was in the sky and then it exploded, you would say, oh, there's a new star in the sky. A new star. What's Latin for new? Nova. That's Latin for new. So this category of variable star, this category of explosion, has come to be known as nova. So, T. Corona Borealis, what's going on? There's a red giant and a white dwarf, and the white dwarf is dead. It's glowing from leftover heat from when it was an authentic star. The sun will die as a white dwarf. When the sun in five billion years sheds all of its outer layers, it will reveal a dense core, a dense core about the size of the earth. That will be a white dwarf that will slowly cool over the eons. But this white dwarf is in a binary orbiting system with the red giants. And red giants like becoming bulbous and they keep expanding and expanding. And there is a balance point, a literal balance point between these two objects where if the expanding gas crosses that balance point, it's a gravitational balance point, then it's no longer gravitationally bound to the red giant and it will fall into the white dwarf. So there's a gas transfer. And this transfer point, as the red giant gets larger and larger, there's what we call a lobe, an envelope of space around it. And it was first described mathematically by a fellow named Roche. So it fills this Roche lobe, and the gas crosses over and lands gently on the white dwarf. So now we have hydrogen on the surface of a white dwarf. And this continues, and it accumulates, and it continues. As that continues, the pressure builds, because the white dwarf is basically solid matter, all right? and you have gas falling on it. At the base of the gas, the pressure is growing and the temperature is growing. Well, this is an unstable situation because eventually there's enough gas pressure down on that hydrogen layer that it ignites. Spontaneous thermonuclear fusion. Well, the sun is doing that in its core every second of every day. But if you do that on your surface, you will blow out all of the gas that was there, catastrophically, because it is uncontained. This is what is visibly a nova seen in the night sky. Now here's what's cool. T. Corona Borealis has been repeating this every 80 years. We have evidence of this going back centuries. What's the evidence? Every time it explodes, there's a gas layer moving slowly away from the system. We have deep photos from specialized telescopes that reveal these shells of gas offering a record of all the previous times this has gone nova. So this happened long ago, but the light is only now just reaching us. So the brightness reaches about magnitude two and a half, and that's astronomer lingo for about the brightness of the North Star is about magnitude two and a half. Many people think the North Star is bright and distinct in the night sky, but it's not. It's just not. Like, get over it. The North Star is not in the top 10. 
it's not even in the top 40. The North Star is the 49th brightest star in the night sky. So this Nova is not something that will grab your attention walking down the street. That's not, no, it's not that. We're gonna have arsenals of telescopes trained on this object because the last time it blew, we didn't have that many telescopes in the world and it certainly weren't space telescopes. So this will be the best studied Nova there ever was simply because of its timing and its brightness. So even though there's 50 or so Novae discovered each year, some of them are repeating. Uh, this one, T. Corona Borealis is one of the brightest simply because of how close it is to us relative to the others. The rest are discovered by telescopes and special surveys uh, intended and designed to make just such discoveries. Again, why do they recur? Because once you have the explosion, we start the cycle all over again. The red giant spills out of its Roche lobe and layers hydrogen gas and some helium until it hits that threshold once again. The fact that this repeats every 80 years means, yeah, that's a once in a lifetime event. We've all heard people describe eclipses that way, once in a lifetime event. Well, that's just BS, bologna sandwich. Because there's an eclipse, a total solar eclipse somewhere in the world every two and a half years or so. They're simply not coming to you that often, but they're coming to Earth more often than the Olympics. So there's another kind of object out there where you have a binary system, once again, a red giant and a white dwarf. And if the white dwarf is already near a different kind of threshold in mass, a threshold first calculated by the, the brilliant Indian astrophysicist Subrahmanyan Chandrasekhar, he noted that if you have a white dwarf that's near a limit, what limit is that? About 1.4 times the mass of the sun. And you drop some more material on it? Oh, it's no longer just let's explode the outer surface. The entire star, white dwarf, goes unstable. And it collapses and becomes a supernova. These are way brighter than Novi. Novi, that's plural, Latin plural, N-O-V-A-E. Way brighter. And we see them in the sky, and so what else could we do but call them super Novi? And they're kind of related because there's a mass transfer, but one is way brighter than the other because one is the catastrophic death of the white dwarf, and the other one is just sort of puffing off, not puffing, it's still explosive, but it's, it's way tamer than what goes on in a supernova. Supernova you can see halfway across the universe. That's how bright they are. They're as bright as the entire galaxy in which they explode. This nova, we are at a safe distance, 2,600 light years. Uh, you can sleep well at night knowing life on Earth will not end from that. <laughs> That's what's up with that. T. Coronae Borealis, an exploding star in a sky near you.